All right, we are live now. Welcome everyone, it's Harmony, Divine Harmony, and I am here with my teacher, Robert Masters, mm -hmm. and um, thank you so much for everyone gathering here with us. So welcome, Robert, thank you, thank for, you. Your, for your time. Um, Robert has been my teacher for over four years now, and he teaches really amazing, in-depth, somatic-based, psychological, spiritual practices to work with your shadow, to work with your emotions, uh, to learn to dive deeper and get into a you know, deeper core part of yourself and then kind of engage with the world from that place. And I invited Robert because as everybody can see, we've got a lot going on, on the planet right now. We have a global situation that is bringing up everyone's emotions. And we're in the midst actually of a portal of big triggers of this astrology from March 20th through April 4th. We've got like really big stuff. And so um, I asked Robert if he'd be open to uh, an interview to help people because I see so much fear, but also denial and disassociation. I, I see so much happening and Robert has amazing wisdom to share and very simple, effective practices to work with at this time. So um, uh, come on in, Robert. I think we lost you. Um, are you there? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So welcome. And uh, yeah, we're, we have a big, big experience on planet Earth right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of the key things that's happening, of course, is a, an increase of uh, people's fearfulness, mm -hmm. understandably so. Mm -hmm. And the good news is the fear can be worked with more deeply, more skillfully. So it doesn't run us. It may still be there, but we're not being operated by it. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity for all of us to deepen our relationship to fear. So it doesn't run us. It's still there in different degrees. Again, understandably so, but it can be worked with. The big step here, it's a huge step, even if it's just a millimeter long, <clears throat> is to turn toward that fear. Turn toward what's painful, difficult, challenging, and basically turn toward our fear. And we'll all be talking about how to do that as we proceed in this call. But that's the first step is to have the intention. And it's counterintuitive, of course, but to turn toward it. Here's the dragon. Here's the fearfulness. Here's the dark cave. And of course, we want to get away from it. We want to numb ourselves, distract ourselves. But in a way, it's calling to us to know it better. Just like a nightmare, we're being called at a certain level to step toward it, to get to know what that is. If we don't know our fear, it can run us more easily. And knowing our fear is not just an intellectual pursuit. It's, it's psychological, emotional, spiritual, everything. And again, the first step is to turn toward it. That means to let yourself feel it more fully. Feel it in its rawness, not all at once. It could be overwhelming if it's a very deep type of fear, but to have that intention. Because once we do that, then we become capable, more capable of seeing the elements that constitute our fear. We get a good look at it. We become a student of it. And after a while, our curiosity about it becomes greater than our aversion. That's a big step. Like a child turning over a stone in a garden to see what's underneath it. We're in a similar position. Here's the stones, there's the blockages to seeing it. And here we have the capacity to actually get up close to it. Not too close, but get a little closer to see what shape is the fear? Where do I feel it in my body? What's happening in my mind as I feel the fear? My upper body, my lower body, my legs, my feet, my hands, my back. Mm -hmm. And the more curious we are, the better. Yeah, yeah. For people who are, this is new to them to, you know, pay attention to their fear, bring presence to their fear, what would you say is like a really good first step? Because I remember when I first started working with like this, I was like, what do you mean bring, like, it was almost mm -hmm. like I had a block to it. Yeah. And so what would you say? First step is to, is to be, is to name it. If you can, that sounds so simple, but just to say fear, here's fear, fear is here to acknowledge it, not to run around trying to fix it or get away from it right away, but to notice it, here it is. Once we name it, we've created a subtle distance from the fear, not a lot, but a little bit of a distance. We can name it. Second step is to, is to shift 
you're focusing on fear from his mental components to his somatic, his body, bodily experience, you're having a fear. It's very hard to work with fear in the mind to try and go into the mind and try and untangle it, especially if it gets paranoid or whatever, it gets to a deeper level of fearfulness, easier, better, more skillful to drop down to your body, especially your guts. Mm -hmm. Most of us are afraid our guts tighten. We get contracted, we feel paralyzed to some degree. Once we have dropped down into our body, we can soften our belly. It's a great thing to do initially, it's just let your belly, mm -hmm. even now, just sense your belly, let it get softer. And for most of you, you're probably going to sense, ah, oh, there's a little tightness there or a lot. Let it soften bit by bit by bit. Once you notice that, you'll feel your pelvic floor softens more. You may still feel fear, but there's a little more space for the fear to exist in. It's not quite as tight a container. And, and when the, the looser and more spacious the container is that our fear is inside our body, the more the fear can expand and eventually become not so much just pure fear as life force, excitation, excitement. And mm -hmm. it begins with dropping down. Here's this descent from somewhere behind your forehead to your navel. You just drop down. On the way, you might go through your heart a little bit, but you drop down, soften the belly. That's the very beginning. Most of us can do that. And then we're more capable at that point of actually exploring the fear. So why don't you all, I'm mean, going jump in really fast now it just feels right to do so everyone close your eyes please close your eyes keep them closed and breathe through your mouth and let your belly get even softer and softer and notice the rest of your body starting to soften just a little back of your neck your scalp your thighs your heart your shoulders your face your jaw everything and I'm going to say some incomplete sentences, which I want you to finish spontaneously as you can, but don't repeat my part. Just finish the sentence out loud. Here we go. I'm feeling. When I get afraid, what I usually do is. And I've been doing this ever since I was. When I was a young child, what scared me the most was, and breathe a little deeper now, breathe deeper. And when I visualize the child in me right now, what I sense right away is, and imagine that child is scared right now just as you mentioned at the end of a sentence a few, a moment ago, a minute ago, imagine that child's got some fear going, maybe a lot of fear. Instead of saying to them in so many words, nothing to be afraid of, everything's okay. You just simply say in so many words, I see you, I see you. And you start to open yourself to that child. You become a loving parental presence, bit by bit, step by step. And in a sense, you're transmitting two things to the child right now in you. I love you and I'll protect you. I'll protect you. And as I start doing this practice, what I notice happening in my belly is softening. And what's happening in my heart right now is opening. And as I open to this fearfulness a little more, I am feeling peace. And as I move a little closer to this place of fearfulness, I am curious. And my love for this child is amen. And when I sense into how many people are feeling an extra level of fear these days, I start to feel. And my message to all those others who are also feeling fear is. I love you. And, and feeling us all in this together makes me. Hopeful. 
And when I stop treating my fear as a problem, what starts to happen is. It can be the solution. At this moment, my mind is. The solution. When I give in to my worry, what happens to me is. Hmm. I get spun around. I long for. Humanity, all interconnected. And if there's any fear in me right now, where it seems to be sitting in my body the most is. And place, place your hands on your body now where you sense this. It could be heart, upper chest, belly, lower belly. Just put your hands there, gently but firmly, and breathe a little deeper, especially into your belly. And the more I soften my belly, the more I And as I shift even more from thinking about my fear to actually feeling it, I feel less afraid. As my body expands a little, what I notice happening to my fear or fearfulness is it diffuses. And the kind of relationship I seem to be having right now with my fear is. My total self. And when I relate to my fear as a frightened or distraught child, mm -hmm. what happens to me is. I step into the adult. And what I'm noticing right now about whatever fear is left to me is relatable. And the space we're all sharing right now mm -hmm. in this virtual moment is the linking of hearts through time and space. My breathing is Breathe a little deeper now, take a deep breath in, all the way in and let it go with mm -hmm. some sound, some just release. <sighs> and once more, another deep breath, even deeper. And let, it go. let it go, let it go, let your eyes open. Here we are. And I didn't mention compassion overtly when I just did, I think I just made up, but I can sense all of you feeling perhaps a little more compassion now, mm -hmm. not trying to be compassionate, trying to do it to get away from your fear, just because it's natural. Everyone's suffering right now, perhaps more than before. There's a natural compassion we have as a collective, as a species for each other, even though it gets obscured or twisted by all kinds of things. I think this is an opportunity for us to feel that compassion in a more pure form. Mm -hmm. And it can be a fierce compassion. It can be a compassion that leads to strong action. More accountability expected of those that are in charge, et cetera. But it's still, it's, it's coming from compassion. And we still get to be afraid. I can be compassionate and afraid at the same time. So can you, so can we all. That's a miracle. Just like anger and love can coexist. Fear and compassion can coexist. If we lean toward our fear and treat it as something not problematic, but something that contains energy we need for more life-giving purposes. And we can't access that energy if we don't turn toward our fear, otherwise it stays trapped. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, this is, excuse me, she, she, Harmony needs to mute her mic when she's completing sentences. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. So. As my wife Diane making a, a minor needed intrusion into, the format of this. Okay, thanks. My assistant texted me. I think it would be helpful to hear your answer. <laughs> so two different. I'm fine either way. 
<laughs> I just know that when we do the groups, we're all together and we're you know all. No, we could do the so next time I do this. I did this for a, a group last week. Everyone has some microphones unmuted, and you hear everyone's voice. Yeah, it's kind of comforting to hear all these other voices there, and this is also diving deeper, sinking into their 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 core a little more. Mm-hmm. So maybe next time I do one of these, maybe next 10, 15, 20 minutes to do a longer one. Mm-hmm. We can we can un- unmute all of them, see what happens. Oh, I don't know if we can do that because. Oh, okay, on, you're you're right. Yeah, we're not on Zoom. We're on Facebook Live. That's what I keep forgetting. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> amazing, the collective. Experience. I will leave it to you. Okay. Yeah. Everybody. Um, yeah, you know, one of the things that strikes me, and this is just where it always goes when we do these different things with you and the groups and stuff, is I just go deeper and deeper and deeper into myself where I just get this sense of like, I'm at my core. And when you're from that place, um, you're not being like tossed around by all the experiences. You're not disassociating from them either, though. You're mm-hmm. fully present to what's happening but you're sourced from such a deep space within yourself that you have the capacity. I yes. And I then in that, that, you see your well being does not depend on the absence of fear. Yes. All fear and all your other emotions get to be there. Yeah. It's like deep shadow work. Everything that constitutes us is allowed to have its own voice. And of course, we need to take charge of that, how we handle it. But we're, we're cultivating intimacy with all that we are in this. That's the essence of it. And yeah. become intimate with fear is a huge thing. Yeah. Doesn't mean it goes away. It means that we no longer are fused with it. Mm-hmm. We're intimate. To be intimate with our fear means we're very close to it. We can see it up close. We see its detailing. And we also have just enough space from it to operate skillfully in how we handle it. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things, too, that was really big for me with the work with emotions is. I would fuse with them and Mm. I wouldn't even realize. I would just think like, for example, let's say grief. I would just be so fused with my grief that it it was me and I was it. And there was no space to separate out, not disassociate, but just Mm. helpfully separate out so that I'm looking at my grief Yes. and able to work with it instead of get taken over by it like a title. The opposite in this context of dissociation is um, numbness and fusion. Mm-hmm. There's a sense of, of, see, when you move towards fear consciously, it's very different than you just react to it, try and get away from it, or you dive in too quickly to try and get through it. There's a sense of moving at a pace that works for us. For some people, just the tiniest of steps every now and then is enough. Other people, they can take a bigger jump. There's no, not, no virtue in taking the bigger jump. It's like each of us has our own capacity. And the key is to compassionately turn toward it. Yeah. Not just fear, but pain suffering a lot of people are not just in uh, pain or suffering now they're on overwhelm same thing overwhelm is not just one emotion but it's a state many people are in now and there's collective overwhelm all over this planet yeah when we're in overwhelm we can't function properly so the step there is to name it here's overwhelm then do something that moves the energy of it Mm -hmm. usually something physical and emotional yeah etc and in this, you see what we're getting at here is that we can take charge of this, not in a way where we control it completely, that we don't get rid of fear. We don't get, we can't meditate in a way where our mind is just completely empty all the time. Real meditation doesn't mind the presence of thoughts. True, truly working with fear does not require the absence of fear. It yeah. just doesn't. Yeah, it's not about obliterating it. It's just here's, not- here's another thing I want to throw into the mix. Uh, so much like more I could say, but um, I have often said, and it's a little simplistic, but I think it's also quite true, that fear is excitement and drag. <laughs> fear and in dark and disguise. That means that if you take, so say if all of you take your hand, put it in a fist in front of you, hold it fairly tight. Imagine that's your fear. It's contracted. It's inward. Mm-hmm. Not much light can get in. Then you don't force your hand open. You just let it you relax the hand, it starts to open all by itself. And this is the transition from fear to excitation, to excitement, to excitement. Then fear becomes not just fearfulness, it also becomes available life energy. It could turn into anger, for example. Yeah. Passion. There's a sense of of more options available. Mm -hmm. But to relax that, you can't do it mentally. Primarily, it has to be from your guts, your heart. It's a sense of saying, okay, this is not truly a problem yeah and you, and you drop down you work out you drop down to your belly soften it 
and perhaps count five to 10, maybe 20 conscious breaths, just dropping down, bend your knees a little bit so you feel your feet on the floor more, you get grounded. Because these times are very unsettling too. Mm -hmm. I just feel there's a lot of uncertainty. And worry to me is, is uh, us kind of flirting with bad possibility, mm. things going off. And, and that's when our mind gets overly involved and we start projecting onto the future things that may or may not happen, but we act, our system treats it as though it's really happening. And yes. suddenly we're, yeah. we're overridden with anxiety, we're worried. And then we're really not of much use to others because we're so caught up in that internal spinning, that, that vortex of going getting tighter and tighter yeah it's like a, a, a yeah, like a ball of yarn getting tighter and tighter and yeah yeah i have to say I, I felt a lot of overwhelm yesterday um just because you know it, everything that's going on and i'm an empath but also i i work from home my daughter homeschools so we're this inner lifestyle is kind of okay but i have no child care and i have a lot of work and i just felt like wanting to get my work done and be there for people and also my daughter so I went for a run, which was amazing. I haven't run in like a long time. And then I went in my sauna and like meditated in my sauna. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm back. It was, it, it, yeah, I, just, the overwhelm, it feels like wave peaks. Yeah. Yeah. And often if someone's overwhelmed, say, for example, with anger, they're going to behave very unskillfully with it. If they go and discharge some of that energy through a hard run, maybe what I call a conscious rant. Mm -hmm. Then they're still maybe angry afterwards, but they're they, they're in a position where it's not dominating them. They can they can be more skillful with it. Yeah. So this is about taking better care of ourselves. And I mean, a great starting point is fear. Everyone has fear, probably daily. Dalai Lama says he gets anxious sometimes. No one's immune to fear. So it's more about: Am I going to cultivate a relationship with my fear, or just go about it in the same old way and try and get away from it? Try and get away from it pharmaceutically or erotically or some other way escape it or I act out in it and then just yeah. be a nervous wreck for example i saw some news the other day this this i mean i i think we have not just a this viral pandemic we also have a pornography epidemic pandemic mm -hmm. for example last week i read that worldwide pornography use went up by 12 percent last week oh yeah People have a lot more time on their hands etc and there's more Here's, and understandably, here's this sense of, oh, here's a place I can feel good about myself, feel a little better, take the edge off. It's, it's very unskillful. Yeah. And that can go on in many, many dimensions of our life. Yeah. Until we realize in our heart of hearts, if we turn toward what's troubling us, we can work with it. And there's enormous freedom in that. Enormous. What would you recommend? Like, because, you know, I... What would you recommend to someone? Like, as you and I are here, I mean, we're we're almost um, privileged in in certain ways. In in our, we have a home and we have food. Or like, what would you recommend for someone in like Italy who just had five family members die in the last week and they're on martial law lockdown? Like, because I know you've had like a heart attack. You've almost drowned several times. Like, you've had experiences where like yeah. this is it. Like, how do you? How do you stay centered in that high, high level of energy? Well, first of all, you may not be able to be centered initially, but if you turn toward the heart of what's troubling you, yeah, you're not going to get better all of a sudden, but you're, you're going to start to develop a different relationship to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Then you're sitting with the, the fear. Like I'd say to the people where it's really difficult, obviously take care of the basics. That's really important. But also mm -hmm. work with the fear because the fear is there. And the more you work with it, the less you'll be driven by it. Yeah. And also at that point, fear is going to coexist with grief. Yeah. And this is where collective fear becomes an important topic. Mm -hmm. Collective fear, of course, is, is present everywhere. It has been for a long time. And um, in that, the basic message of collective fear is uh, we are threatened. Mm -hmm. We are threatened. We're not safe. And as, as blared forth through social media papers, et cetera, over and over uh, day after day after day, we're not safe or threatened. But here's the interesting thing about collective fear. If you tune into it deeply and you let yourself feel it, how it impacts you, and then ask yourself, how are others dealing with this? You'll start to feel some compassion coming into your system. Mm -hmm. You'll feel others who are doing in the same boat as you, maybe worse off, maybe not, but they're suffering. And I've seen collective fear when I acknowledged and felt deeply can break the heart open. Yeah. 
in a, in a big scale, then the grief is not just my grief, your grief, it becomes our grief and it becomes the grief. Yeah. There's so much to have grief about on this planet. Yeah. And that, that grief doesn't just take us down into a puddle of despair. It actually can break us open to what really matters. Yeah. It's the most spiritual emotion for me. It can crack us open in a very painful way sometimes. Now we can feel life more deeply. We're devastated and yet we're here. And we sense others in the same boat. We're, we're starting to grieve together. We're creating a web of that. We're not just caught up in our own fearfulness, little isolated me-centered pods here and there. It's more like we're on the same team. Our species is in crisis. Yeah. And grief to me can unite the species. And that often can start with turning toward the fear, turning toward that more and more and more. Yeah. I said that in a nutshell, but I mean, I have a whole book on working with emotions, which I... I'm not going to read. I from recommend. <laughs> yeah, it's called emotional intimacy. There's a lot in there on collective fear, collective overwhelm, fear, grief. It's yeah. so important though to turn toward these and not say, "Ah, that's fear is negative, anger is negative." To me, there's no such thing as a negative emotion, but yeah. there are negative things we do with emotions. If I have fear in my system, and I turn into worry, that's a choice. That's something negative I'm doing with my fear, mm -hmm. letting it mutate into worry. And then I get stuck in it if I don't pay attention. I've seen some people have their fear that they're not aware that they have turn into judgment of other people's fear. Mm. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, not so great. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it's and when people are doing that, that's it's so easy to project what we don't really want to face in ourselves onto others. That's another example. That's the key thing in shadow work. Yeah. And what's missing in what you described in that scenario is the compassion for others. Mm -hmm. Imagine your child is really scared, terribly scared from a nightmare, and you just give her a little lecture, but you're feeling better. Life is actually say, you know, talking her out of it, trying to talk her out of it. Instead of being with her, I, like, I see your fear. I know you're afraid. And you hold her. You let her settle into your embrace and your presence. Yeah. This is a I've been having fear come up too. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And I'd say to uh, parents that are concerned about this in their children, yeah. I'd say one of the key things to do right off the bat, before it gets too complex, work on your own fear. You become an example of, of someone who's got fear but is not lost in it. That will be transmitted via osmosis to your kids. They'll okay. feel you're calm, things are shaky, difficult, and you're not freaking out. You're not medicating yourself like crazy. You're just simply more present Maybe you're sad, you're hurting, but you are solid. You're mm -hmm. dependable. And that gives the child a sense of increased security. Because a lot of what's going on now is an increased sense of insecurity, yeah. great uncertainty. And at the core of that, the emotion at the core of that is fear. So go back full circle, work with your fear and everything else starts to be taken care of. Yeah, and it, astrologically, the, the North Node's in Cancer and it's a year and a half long transit. But I've been talking about how this is all about cancer's emotions. It's the mother. It's the inner child. It's like working with your little one because our fear is actually our own little one getting triggered. It's like if you have a kid who's being scared, our own inner child inside is having fear or yes. pain yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. the emotion is. So for anybody out there listening, like step one would be to notice when fear is present, you know, and sometimes you'll be caught in fear for a while before you catch that you're in fear, but all you got to do is just catch it first and go, okay, fear is present. And here's something for those that don't have children. I want to include them too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, my advice is personify your fearfulness as a very young child. Hmm. Do you want to take care of? Maybe you have someone in your life, like a uh, someone else in your life as young children, even, even without that, there's a sense of, I'm going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pat your back and say everything's okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to love you and protect you. And I'm committed to that. And I will do that even when I feel like crap. I'm going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. So that's called for. And we have this enormous pause in our culture, our planet right now. Yeah. And a pause can refresh. It can be a chance to not just distract ourselves and you fill in the time. We're like, here's a chance to dive deep. And why not start with your fear? And then go to the other emotions. 
working yeah. with grief, your anger, becoming more emotionally literate and more attuned to others in that. Yeah, even if they're not in your physical space because we're all self-isolating or distancing. Um, yeah, I was just going to say something about something you just said and it just escaped me. What was it? Um, yeah, it just went out the window. Am I, oh, just one other thing I thought of. I think part of the art here is not just getting under the dragon's skin, so to speak, like getting inside the, our fear. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do guided meditation on this quite soon, how to get into it even more, is to also start the art of bringing your fear into your heart. Mm -hmm. Not right off the back. That can just seem like it doesn't make sense in some ways. When we bring our fearfulness, persona, I'd say, as a young child, into our heart, our heart is not going to suddenly become frightened and in bad shape. It's probably going to expand a little. Mm -hmm. If I bring a difficult state I'm in into my heart, usually there's a, an expansion. There's a sense of making more room for it. Mm -hmm. Once your heart, the fear is in there, maybe this continues as fear. It may mutate into excitement or anger. Who knows what? But now you've got it. It's like saying to it, that hurt young child, I've got you. Yeah. I've got you. And I'm not just... You're not just saying that now and then in a practice you do every three days. It's consistent. I yeah. will not let you be attacked by anything, including your my, the, my inner critic. No one has access. No thing has access to you without my permission. There's a sense of being like this really strong, fiercely loving, fiercely compassionate parent. Mm -hmm. And that fierceness is really a crucial thing too in all this, where we need to hold those who are in governing positions more accountable. Yeah. Not just by complaining about them, but actually taking action, stepping in, be, reclaiming our activist heart. And that you can't do that if you're caught in fear, but you can do it if you've got your healthy anger on tap. Yes. And another thing to know here, I know I'm throwing in a lot, is that's anger, and, anger, anger and fear are biochemically pretty well the same thing. Oh. Pretty well the same. But the context is different. And, I, and, and fearfulness, I'm going to go, I'm going to contract inward. Yeah. Anger for better, for worse, I thrust forward. This yeah. movement. So when we when we have our allow the energy of fear to become the energy of anger to some degree, we can take action more strongly. And if we connect that anger with some degree of heart, we won't do harm, but we also won't be passive or meek. We'll be fierce. That's needed too. Perfect timing because I just recorded a gate call for the new moon that I put out for free for everyone. So you can find it on my website. And the guided meditation is all about the heart, heart anger, um, mm. taking action from this place of the heart. It's, it's yeah. everything you just said. I remembered what I was going to say before. So one thing that really strikes me is at this time now, so many, everybody, well, not everybody yet, but so many people are being asked to stay at home, you know, unplugging from social life, outings, external focus. And a lot of times that busy, busy outer life is kind of a cover for not having to really go inside or yeah. and everybody's now sitting at home with all their unresolved emotions that they've used things to, you know, kind mm -hmm. of push it down with and it's all coming up. Mm -hmm. And some people are very, very overwhelmed. Um, so I guess your your recommendation probably just start with the overwhelm. Don't even go into the fear. Yeah, and then and then start, then start the just take it a little bit at a time. Don't try and work it work with your anger all in one day or two. Like get yeah. to know it. Implicit in this is knowing our history with each emotion. Like each yeah. of us is different that way. If I've had a very negative association with anger as a child, I may have a version to expressing it when I'm growing up, mm -hmm. etc. Or I may overdo it the other way. But if we know our history. So I'd say one of the first steps with fear, besides what we described, write out your history with it. Get to when did you first feel it? How was it handled? What did you decide about yourself from those experiences? And how is that still impacting you these days? Mm. And to what degree are you unwilling to show your fear or acknowledge its presence? Yeah. It, it sounds simple to say, ah, oh, fear is here, I'm afraid. But it's a big, to actually say it and really mean it and feel it is a big thing. You're admitting it. There may be some shame around that. Oh, I shouldn't be afraid. But you know what? It's part of our human equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what would you say to people who don't 
uh, are saying they don't feel any fear and they're getting triggered by other people who are in fear. Do you have any? And then you can explore the triggering and look deeper. I think everyone has fear. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of fears on like, like, for example, I think one of the fears at the core of what we're talking about is the fear of death. Yeah. Beyond our belief system to what happens at death and after, underneath the belief systems, here's the sense of what death is, mm -hmm. the annihilation that it is implicit in it. And letting yourself feel that. You may not stay stuck there. Maybe you go to a deeper, even a deeper level where you're okay with that, or even it's, it's just part of your equipment. Mm. There's a sense of, of not avoiding the core levels of it. Yeah. And for those that have a lot of time on their hand, I'd say become a student of fear, become a student of emotion. Like, I'm just, if you understand fear deeply, the rewards are incredible. Because fear is not just fear, it's worry, anxiety, terror, dread, self doubt, paranoia. There's so many different varieties of it. And we're not, most of us aren't, haven't been taught emotional literacy 101. We didn't learn about fear very well, very much or not at all. Mm. Yet here it is. It's a pr very primal and very primitive emotion. It has its origins in the contractile capacity of one-celled organisms. It goes all the way back, not as an emotion, but as a state. Fear is part of it, this, the whole dance. Fear is contraction. Doesn't mean expansion is better, but fear is, there's a contraction at the core of it. So you become a student of it and you don't have to consult very many books. You start sitting with it, looking at it. And every day you'll have a chance to, to attune. Ah, here's some fear. Then maybe you say, ah, what's the fear about? Where do I feel it in my body? Yeah. The body, uh, is, the key. The body is the key. Because even in my astrology, you know, mm -hmm. I just taught that class on astrology and your shadow. People love learning the teachings and then they would admit, I'm having a hard time doing the practices. I'm resisting the practices. Like, you got to drop it in from the head, the knowledge, the, what you're the saying. Part of doing the practice of fittingly, a practice is also feeling the resistance to the practice yeah. and making that wrong, but exploring the resistance itself. Like I have a whole chapter in my book on shadow, on resistance and shadow. Resistance yeah. is part of the dance. Yeah. I see people coming for deep work. Part of them wants to dive really deep, heal, awaken, etc. The other part doesn't want to do it. I want to meet both. If I don't meet both, then the whole the whole dance becomes too partial. There's a sense of not turning away from anything, including our resistance. Yeah. So let's shift gears to another practice now. Okay. And wing another I one. I need to mute myself if they're speaking, or do you? I don't care. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Everyone, close your eyes and breathe deeper. I know we've been covering a lot of territory in the last half hour. Let yourself just settle in more, breathing deeper, belly softens, eyes are still closed. No need to think about what's just been said, just drop into your body more. Feeling your chest softening, the space between your shoulder blades softening, your whole body settling. And again, I'm gonna say some incomplete sentences I want you to finish them spontaneously as you can, but don't repeat my part. Here we go. Right now, I am. The kind of fear I have the hardest time with usually is. And imagine now that you have some of that fear in you. If you don't, just use your imagination. But there's some, some fear in your system. And just notice that. And now, imagine you're moving a little closer to that fear, like we did earlier. Here's some more sentences to complete. If this fear had a color, it would be. And if this fear had a shape, that shape might be. Blood. And where I feel this sense of color and shape in my body right now is. And the movement of this zone of fearfulness, the movement in it is 
Amen. The more attention I pay to my fear right now, the more it seems to be. And the color or colors of it now are And when I stop trying to get rid of this fear, what happens is And if this fear could somehow speak, it might say, Life is out of control. And my response to that is, And what I'm doing with my fear right at this moment is and when I sense all the others on this earth who are feeling probably a lot like I am right now or worse, I start to feel And what I wish for all of them is I have grief about people dying. When I really feel my grief, what happens to my fear is No, my breathing feels. And the little child inside me is. And my message to that child is hmm. my vow to that child is I will protect you. no matter how upset I am what I will do for that child is And when I imagine bringing that child in his or her fearfulness into my heart, I start to feel. I love. And the fact that my heart has room for all of it makes me feel I am so ready for My belly feels. And the back of my heart feels. And this virtual space we're all in right now feels. And if I could see you all and look into your eyes, I would 
say to you. Thank you for showing up. Now my fear is The kind of relationship I want to develop with my fear is. My forehead feels. I trust. And the silence feels. When I let myself rest in the silence a little more, I. My true nature, my true nature is. If I could give all of you a gift, it would be. I am we are yeah. and may all beings Okay, take a deep breath and let it go. Uh, and one more, even deeper. Let it go fully. Allowing yourself to sit up straight, not too straight, not rigid, but just where you feel the elevation, sense of dignity sensing your capacity to work with us, even when it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. And let your eyes open. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. My assistant was texting me, people had questions, but, uh, Unless you feel like taking a few, I'm, I'm If a few that apply to people in general, that could happen, yeah. Are there other, other metaphors that, other than a parent child that we can use to come into relationship with our personal or collective fear? Or do you find this is the best one in terms of effectiveness? I found it to be the best. Of course there's others, but this, this one is really works. It's, it's, it's in our DNA. We all, all have that capacity. Yeah. Um, that's all she sent me. And I can't see if I'm looking on there. I'm not present uh, with you. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Um, I do want everybody to know that Robert has a beautiful audio book. That, I mean, because right now, Amazon, I don't think is sending books. So you have so many books I would recommend, yeah. but I don't know if people can get them. Yeah. Um, but you have an audio book on Audible. And do you want to tell people? Knowing your that? shadow. Yeah, I did it with Sounds True, Bob five, six years ago, and it's, it's a complete course on working with shadow. Mm -hmm. And it's all audio, of course, and it's it covers a lot. 
Mm -hmm. like there's five or five hours of it. You can just put on your headphones, listen to it. Not while you're driving, but when you're at home. A lot of practices. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. I have a new book out on Shadow, but I understand it's going to be harder to access that. But the Shadow audio program, you can get it from Amazon or from Sounds True. Mm -hmm. And um, my other audio books are Spiritual Bypassing and Transformation Through Intimacy. Those are great. I mean, I like all your books, but my first book I ever read by you was uh, Spiritual Bypassing. It was very eye-opening. <laughs> I was like, whoa, I see myself here and I see the spiritual mm -hmm. community I'm part of. And it was it was what yeah. led me to you, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another thing I'm going to be doing, I, I, I retired from doing individual work four or five years ago. Um, I, so I put all my energy into doing groups, trainings, mentorships. And that's mm -hmm. been great. And but given what's going on now, uh, it felt right to me to re enter that arena of doing individual work. So I've, I've advertised that as of yesterday, just for this, this yeah. call. And in that, I'll be offering individual sessions um, for a while. Yeah. And, and he hasn't done this since the beginning when I first met you, I think was the last time you were doing personal. Yeah. Training. So that means that you fill out my application form, and then, I, then you set a time with me, and we do 40 minutes. I'm pretty efficient, so 40 minutes is quite a long time. And and I'm happy to do that. It feels right to do that at this point. Yeah, that's one thing is I really feel like people like you and me and other healers and, and teachers, like we're really being called to step up and be of service, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of people. I actually even was saying the other day um, to a friend, one of the women in the group I'm in with you, about how I feel like all these years of this shadow work have prepared me to be here now, being able to, to help, you know, not that I have it all figured out at all, but being able to have been through some of this to mm -hmm. a degree, this deep mm -hmm. work. And so being able to hold a space. And mm -hmm. um, so I really feel like inner work and this deep shadow work and working with emotions like this is, this is worth its weight in gold. Mm -hmm. as we're seeing the stock market fall and people are having money issues and it's like this is very valuable work more and more surfacing and the good part of that is when it surfaces we can work with it. it's no longer buried yes yeah. including in our collective shadow there's more and more is coming to the surface not to be bewailed but to say here's a chance to work with this stuff here's a chance to know ourselves in a deeper and deeper way because we don't know our shadow elements what's in our shadow they will run us from behind the scenes and that's that's inevitable and that's our conditioning yeah instead of letting our conditioning just stuck in our shadow pick our partners we develop the capacity we, we choose our partners we choose what we want to do we have real choice that's not the, the choice making capacity of our conditioning it's our choice so this is a time of huge there's a lot of opening a lot of pain we don't know what's going to happen uncertainty yeah time to cultivate more of a not knowing mind in a, in a deep Buddhist sense where you just simply, ah, oh, you make space for the unknown, the uncertainty. You learn to sit with it and not have to end it or figure it out. Yeah. You're just present with it. That's a big thing. It's kind of, I mean, women who birth babies <laughs> might recognize that metaphor, you know, because it's like the pain and the contractions, it's not going to go anywhere until the baby comes out, like to just surrender to the birthing process, to surrender to what is. Mm -hmm yeah yeah that's uh that's a beautiful metaphor for right yeah. now thank you so much for your time i know every time i've interviewed you and had you in my different courses people get so much out of it and i'm already my my assistant's like there's so many thank yous there's uh -huh. <laughs> um, but we're not going to take any more questions because i'm yeah. kind of yeah. wrapping up now but but also I, I appreciate you setting this up i'm no techie so you set this up for me i show up do my thing yeah. And I can see doing more of this. There's other, this is a big topic we entered into, but there's different aspects of it that could deserve a full hour or two on their own. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe this will happen again. Yeah. We can figure out some other ones to come. And so thank you so much. And thank you everybody who, who showed up. This mm -hmm. will stay as a Facebook live on my page. And then I'm also going to post it on YouTube channel. So it'll be accessible there and I'll make sure to post Robert's website. Um, so that you can go navigate to him. Mm -hmm. He's just mm -hmm. an amazing resource. When groups and stuff start up again, I can't 
more highly recommend them. <laughs> um, but right now it's all virtual, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I'm just sending so much love to everyone and we are all in this together and we are a, a global humanity. And this is an opportunity for us to all remember that we and are- And we are capable of turning the enormous corner we have to turn. Yes. This might be the start of it. Yes, yes. Yeah. And please check out my website if you're new to me. I have all kinds of free resources and calls and whatnot if you're into astrology and many blessings. Thank okay. you, Robert. Thank you, Diane, for holding okay. space. Goodbye, all. Bye.